All right, men, welcome to today's episode of Strong Men, Strong Marriages, how to make your wife more interested in having sex with you. So I have a feeling this is going to be a popular episode. <laughs> I just kind of put a, a training together for um, a uh, something I'm going to be involved with a conference. And this was the topic. And just wanted to share it with you guys because it, uh, it ended up really good. <laughs> So my name is Mike Frazier, MD. I help high achieving Christian men have more intimate marriages. Today is going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of a summary of a lot of the things that you'll, if you've been listening for a while, you've probably heard some of these things, um, but it's good to review them and just kind of put it all together in how this works. Like, how do you get your wife more interested in having sex with you? So some wins from the guys in my program, the Strong Men, Strong Marriages program. So guys, they're having that increasing physical intimacy. You know, their wife is initiating physical touch. She's, you know, interested in them again, physically, right? Which we're going to talk about this, but that's kind of the, what happens after you build some other things first. Um, guys are feeling increase in emotional strength and management. Uh, a lot of times high achieving guys, we kind of have this mindset of like thinking we're, we know better than our wife or kind of making her feel bad when she makes mistakes, doing that kind of thing. So guys are noticing that and they're getting rid of that pattern, right? And having the strength to just actually have empathy and compassion for their wife. Uh, again, wives are initiating that physical touch, which is a big win. Guys are breaking patterns of like not involving their wife in important decisions. They're getting her opinion, valuing it, like really seeing her as an equal, which is the kind, kind of guy you want to be and much more attracted to her. You guys are handling parenting issues with more patience. Because look, when you learn how to manage your thoughts and emotions better, that translates into you being a better parent as well. This is one of my favorite quotes from, uh, from guys from the week. He said he's letting go of monitoring my wife's moods for if we're okay or not. So just kind of like being, being able to be happy, even if she's not right. Like this is what it's all about that, that freedom that comes from, you know, not constantly trying to make your wife happy all the time, but, um, uh, feeling okay with who you are as a person and just seeing that, man, I love that one. Uh, guys are having better time management, right? Focusing on building their strength more noticing, Hey, like I'm wasting that time. That's not who I want to be. So stepping into who they want to be, um, guys, they're, we, we learn new ways of thinking, right, as part of the program, and guys are starting to see them make these changes in the moment, right, instead of catching it after, they're catching it as it happens, making those adjustments, super impressive. Um, one of my, another one of my favorite ones from this week was uh, one of the gentlemen said that he was working with a therapist, and the therapist thought the changes in him were just, like, shocking, right, how how quickly he was making improvement. Um, so some guys, they're, they're seeing the therapist for, you know, different things. And this program definitely can work in, in conjunction with that and really help accelerate the results of therapy because of the type of things we do. Um, this guy also said, it feels great becoming the man I want to be and talked about how God's doing a work in him, um, which I love that, right? Like to me, a, a big part of this program is connecting you more with God, helping you connect more with God, um, feeling that self-worth through him. And that's just powerful. You know, we combine that spiritual element with the mental and emotional uh, training, the, the tools that really work for uh, changing your brain, and your habits. And that's why it just works, right? Uh, for me, Elizabeth complimented me on how I've been, um, you know, treating her and, and behaving with, uh, she's just been feeling kind of down lately. And um, that happens, right? And in the past, I would make it about me and get whiny and stuff. And I haven't been this time and she's noticing, which has been great. So, um, who, who this is for, right? Who this podcast is for, who this episode is for, right? Uh, it's really for you. If you don't have the sexual, mental, and emotional intimacy you want with your wife, right? That's, that's what this podcast is about. And it could be that you feel like you're doing all the right things, but your wife just isn't interested in you sexually, right? Maybe you look pretty good from the outside. This is more my story where if you didn't know, like you would have thought, oh, you, these guys have the perfect marriage, but really inside there was disconnection the, you know, we went over a year with zero sexual intimacy at one point. Um, so, and I was getting really frustrated right, with that. Um, but sometimes I didn't even let my wife know and, and I just felt trapped, right? I thought other people would be interested in having sex with me, but my wife wasn't and just felt ripped off and it was a rough time. But again, we looked okay from the outside. Um, or maybe, maybe your story is you were in, unfaithful or maybe your wife was, okay. That's obviously a big kind of thing that happens in marriages and happens often. Um, or maybe your wife's already talking about separation or divorce. You know, the, that's kind of more obvious, like 
something's really wrong <laughs> if something like that's happening. But the truth is they all have the same root problem, right? And that is that your wife has lost attraction for you. Okay, that's what it all boils back down to. You know, if your wife, if you want your wife more interested in having sex with you, okay, or even if you're just like, man, if she just moved back in with me, that'd be great. Like the, the goal is the same. You need to become more attractive to her. You know, she's lost that attraction. At some point she was attracted or she wouldn't have married you, right? So what you're going to learn today is the top reasons why your wife has lost attraction to you. The number one thing that women are attracted to and how to develop that and how to go through the process of becoming that strong, attractive man and creating a strong, passionate marriage. That's why this podcast is named what it is, Strong Men, Strong Marriages. Become that strong, attractive man. Then learn the skills to create a great, passionate marriage. So a little bit about me. So again, Mike Fraser, MD. I got my bachelor's degree in neuroscience from BYU. I got my medical degree from UCLA. So the same medical school that, you know, your, your family doctor went to. I went to that same medical that type of medical school, um, got my MD degree at UCLA, then did a psychiatry residency at UC Irvine. So you become a psychiatrist by going to medical school, then doing four years of a psychiatry residency. So I learned a lot about therapy and uh, the brain and how it works there. Uh, so I've been married since 2005. My wife and I have five children. And yeah, I founded Strong Men, Strong Marriages. Uh, again, like a big part of what drove me here was uh, my own frustration in my marriage. Like I said, I felt like I was doing everything right, but my wife just didn't want to have sex with me. I blamed a lot of that on her going through abuse. And certainly that has something to do with it. Um, but a bigger part of it was like, we finally went to see our own therapist because the or coach actually, she was a coach um, and just saw, wow, like I'm doing a lot of things that are really unattractive to her. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't see it. I couldn't see it. Right. Until I went to see somebody that could point them out. Um, and when I saw that, I was like, man, and then, you know, it was able to make those changes and become much more attractive to her. And now we are enjoying the type of marriage that I would love for my kids to have one day. And I think that's the biggest test. Like if you could tell your kids right now, like, yeah, I'd love for you to have a marriage like mine. Like you're doing great. If you can't say that, then yeah, you need some, you need some help. Right. And that's what we're here to do to, to help you do that. So, you know, I help, help high achieving Christian men have more intimate marriages. I say high achieving because high achieving guys, if you're, you know, I work with doctors, lawyers, um, you know, business owners, executives, guys that are pretty successful. Um, we tend to have some similar problems as far as like the way we think and act that work in business, but are very unattractive to our wives. So, you know, I'm, I'm good at pointing those out because I've had it myself and the guys that I've worked with, they have a similar kind of issue. Um, so when we do this though, you know, it sets this example for generations to follow. And as a Christian guy, right, we want to be that city on a hill that, that Jesus wanted us to be. When we have that marriage, it, it matters, right? So some wins from uh, some more wins from guys in my program, right? So you guys are saying we were we were actually intimate for the first time in a long time in a way that didn't feel obligated. Super cool. Um, another gentleman, I'm so thankful to Dr. Mike and his program. My wife and I are separated and living 500 miles apart. It's been difficult to do everything given our distance apart. So I've done what I could when I talked to my wife. This has made a huge difference. And now my wife and I have reconciled. Love it. I spent last week visiting her and my kid. She's wearing her wedding ring again, telling her, telling me how much she loves me. We had amazing physical intimacy before I left. Okay. This is what I love getting these things, right? Love seeing these. God's answered so many prayers and Dr. Mike's program has been one of the keys to opening the door to do God's work. Again, like I really believe in that, that, you know, when we, when we use God's power and combine it with, you know, tools from therapy and coaching that work, you know, it just, just works. Right. Um, yeah. And so, you know, he goes on to say, my wife and I have agreed to, to live near her parents uh, where she's staying with my kids. So anyway, just super cool, right? Super cool stuff. So I told you, I, I'd tell you like the, what the number one thing is that women are attracted to. So women, they're attracted to strength. That's the truth. Okay. Um, but not so much physical strength. I mean, that's, it's better if you're physically strong and fit than if you're not, but it's more spiritual, mental, emotional, and sexual strength physical too, but those are the strengths that she's looking for, right? And your wife, she's lost attraction to you because you've shown weakness in one or more of these areas, okay? So that lack of sexual interest, it's a symptom of a much bigger problem, okay? So it, like sexual techniques or conversations, they're, they're not going to be enough, right? So if you're like, oh my God, I just want to know, like, what can I say that will make her interested in having sex with me? It's not that, right? There's not going to be a quick fix. We've got to go deep and really change the core issue, right? That you need to build strength. 
So when we do this, we build these strengths, and then we build the three pillars of a passionate marriage, which are trust, communication, and intimacy. Okay, so right now you've eroded those pillars by having negative, unattractive patterns of thinking, feeling, and acting. Okay, there's things that you're doing that are driving your wife away. So one of the biggest ones that I see you guys have is something I call the mosquito cycle. What this is, is it really boils down to this idea of happy wife, happy life, right? And so you go out and you're like, okay, I'm just going to make my wife happy, right? I'm going to, I'm going to buy her stuff. I'm going to do the five love languages. I'm going to plan the days. I'm going to do everything, right? I'm going to wash the dishes, okay? So you're doing all this nice stuff, right? But behind that is the second part, which is happy life, which is, okay, well, if I'm doing all this, then it, my wife should also do something for me. She should make me happy by giving me attention, appreciation, affection, and sex, right? So for a while it can work, like especially early in a marriage, if you're like doing the dishes and doing all that, your wife's like, oh man, my husband's so great. And she's appreciating that. But then it starts to drop off, right? And you're in your mind, you're like, well, what's wrong with her, right? I'm doing this. Why isn't she doing that? But what she's picked up on is you're not really doing it to serve her. You're doing it because you want something back. And that's why I call it the mosquito cycle, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to suck off attention, appreciation, affection, and sex. So I like to use the example, like I, I bought my wife flowers one time and she, she took them, she said, thanks, but then she didn't put them in a vase. And then I got mad. I was like, what? She can't appreciate that. Look at everything I do for her. And what that did was expose that I wasn't doing that just to like show I was interested in her. I was doing it because I wanted her to tell me how great I was, right? I wanted her to prop up my ego, tell me that I was a great husband, okay? Not, I wanted to show love for her, right? So again, that's the mosquito cycle and it's not good, right? Or like I'd be in my closet trying to choose clothes just to like hope she would like them, right? I've talked to guys who said, I just, I just want my wife to like me. I wish she would like me, right? All of that's part of the mosquito cycle. You want her to build up your self-worth, right? So again, you're doing these nice things. You're expecting something back. And then when you don't get it, you start getting mad, right? You're like, Hey, you know, I'm doing all this for you. Why can't you just say thank you? Right? Why can't you just have sex with me? You know, I'm being faithful to you. You know, I'm, I'm trying to live a good Christian life. I could have an affair, but I'm not right. You should be having sex with me. So all that leads to frustration when you don't get it. And then you either explode at her, you're mad. Hey, you know, I'm doing so much for you. Why can't you do this for me? If you're asking stuff like, um, you know, what have you done for me lately? Okay. That's a good clue. Need some help. <laughs> like you're in this cycle. Um, or you escape, right? You go to pornography. Maybe you had an affair. Maybe you um, just turn to work or exercise or just something to kind of distract yourself from the frustration and the sadness that you don't have the marriage that you want. And then eventually you come back. And you're like, okay, well, you know, I should I should be doing more service. Let me do more for her. But then again, you know, you're you get mad when you don't get anything back, and it's just that cycle over and over again. Okay. So. The mosquito cycle, right? It, it breaks trust. Okay. It's it, it, at its core, it's about low self worth. Narcissism also, for us, like, oh, you're a narcissist, right? She thinks that you don't listen to her, you think you're better than her. It also comes down to that low self worth, right? Because you're trying to prove you're better than the people around you. Um, and your wife takes the brunt of that often. You know, that's why if you're like, let's say a, a doctor or something, people at work pretty much appreciate you. They think you're great. And then you come home and your wife doesn't, and you're mad at her because. She doesn't think you're that great or as great as the people at work, but that is a symptom that you can't hold on to your own sense of self-worth very well. Right. And she just sees it more, right. You can't trick her because you're around her all the time. Um, so we have to really build that sense of self-worth. That's the solution. Um, but yeah, so mosquito cycle, it's manipulative, right? It's, uh, you're trying to suck that off of her. So all of that, it's very unattractive to her, even though you're quote unquote doing all the right things, right? She, she knows that there's a, a problem here and she might not even be able to put her finger on it, but that is what's going on. Okay. So that drops trust, right? Cause she knows you're manipulating her, trying to manipulate her, uh, broken promises, right? If you go to your wife right now and you're like, Hey, like what percent of the time do I follow through with what I say? You know, if she says under 90%, okay, you're breaking trust. Okay. Uh, infidelity is obviously a break in trust. Pornography, obviously a break in trust. Uh, just having poor emotional control, like losing your temper or stuffing your emotions, not really being able to talk about your emotions at all. Okay. All of that, they're internal weaknesses. Okay. And what that happens is 
trust drops, your wife can't trust you, you can't really even trust yourself, okay? You have low self-worth. A lot of guys will come to me and they'll say, yeah, I feel like I just kind of have low self-esteem. Um, I feel really kind of emotionally unstable right now because of what's going on in my marriage. Um, so if you can't hold on to yourself, take care of yourself, your wife, you know, doesn't feel safe with you, okay? You don't have trust. So the, what you might see from her, she might say stuff like, I want space. She might try to get away from you, right? Something big like a separation, or maybe she's just like turning away from your hugs and kisses, or, you know, just saying no to sex all the time, or, you know, saying you're like one of the kids or saying, I don't even, I don't really need you anymore. Some of the guys that worked with me and that's been the, their wife's comment to them, um, or just directly, Hey, I can't trust you. Okay. Or she brings up your past mistakes over and over. All of those are symptoms of low trust. Okay. So when there's low trust and safety, communication starts to suffer. Okay. So she doesn't feel comfortable sharing her deep feelings with someone that she doesn't trust. Okay. That makes sense. Right. So what that leads to is superficial communication and an uncomfortable feeling at home, feeling like you're walking on eggshells a lot, uh, or feeling like roommates, you're just not having fun together. You don't really look forward to spending time together. And so that results in low mental and emotional intimacy. You don't really feel connected to each other. You're, uh, and then at that point, that can be a trigger for emotional affairs. You know, when you don't have that connection with your spouse, sometimes you'll look for it somewhere else. So in this stage, right, with low trust and low mental and emotional intimacy, she might be saying stuff like, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Uh, or things are cordial, but they're not intimate, right? It's just kind of like, again, roommates, or you're, you're, you're having these frequent fights that never get resolved. Or you're always hiding what you're really thinking and feeling, okay? Or maybe she's just saying stuff like, man, I just can't do this anymore, right? So you don't feel like best friends. Again, it's not being fun together. You don't look forward to spending time together. You're not excited to see each other. It's not like it used to be, you know, some guys will tell me that. Um, and, and you can't get to win-win with stuff like money, sex, in-laws, parenting, religion, housework, or free time. You kind of keep losing in those areas. And that's part of that mosquito cycle. Oh, let me make my wife happy, right? And so, like, she's spending more money than you think is fair. You're having sex way less than you want. You're um, spending more time with her in-laws. You are kind of doing maybe more than you think is fair in parenting. Or you're just kind of, like, deferring to her all the time, which also is kind of, like, not a strong position. Um, with religion, you're just kind of, like, going along with what she thinks. Um or, you know, with, uh, some guys too, though. So I work with Christian guys. Some guys will take the lead only in religious stuff and their wife will complain about that. She's like, well, yeah, you'll take the lead there, but nowhere else. Okay. Which again, like that's, that's weakness in some of these other areas. Right. Or sometimes guys, they'll, they'll take a, a moral high ground with religion, right? Like, oh, well, I believe this way and that's the right way. And if you believe something else, you're wrong. Right. Um, and that also that superior mindset. Okay. Again, it goes back to that, that self-worth issue, right? You think you're better than her, um, but you're trying to prove you're better than her, right? Where really the, 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 the truth is love your neighbor as yourself, love her equally to yourself, value her opinion equally to yours, not more and not less. Um, but yeah, guys can, can take that. And it's very unattractive, like a holier than that attitude, very unattractive. Um, but, uh, coming back to, you know, the win-win the thing, housework, you feel like you're doing more than your fair share. Uh, maybe you're doing a lot of the housework and you're making all the money and that seems unfair to you, but you won't speak up because you're like, well, you know, that means I'm being a good husband. So I should get attention, appreciation, affection, and sex back for that, but you're not. And so you keep doing more, maybe give up, give up time with friends. You're just like, man, what else do I need to do that my wife will be attracted to? But again, it's all based on that wrong thinking of happy wife, happy life. <laughs> okay. It just doesn't work. Um, so in other words, you keep losing, hoping to make her happy, but it just, it never works. She's never that happy. It never results in attraction. And you start feeling trapped in your marriage. Like, man, like what else am I supposed to do? Or what can I do? Like, I can't have an affair because of my beliefs. I don't want to leave the marriage. We got kids, right? But do I want to be in a marriage like this forever where we don't have any connection, especially, you know, if we have no sexual connection, right? Because when there's poor communication and low mental and emotional intimacy, usually there's low sexual intimacy as well. Okay. Your wife doesn't really want to open herself up physically to someone that she doesn't feel safe with or connected to. So what that leads to is her, you know, shying away from your hugs or kisses and long periods of no sex. Like I said, you know, my wife and I went over a year at one point. Um, so that leads to sexual frustration, pornography, affairs. Okay. And 
again, the what's tricky is she she might not even know why she doesn't want to be with you in that way, right? Especially if you're quote unquote doing the right things. If you're from the outside, quote unquote, the perfect husband, um, you know, you're, you're really in that mosquito cycle. It's just like, yeah, I don't know. But now you do know why. Okay, you know why she's turning away. It's because you are showing weakness in these areas, right? You're being manipulative in your actions. Even though she can't pick it up, maybe directly, she can intuitively sense it. She kind of knows when you're doing the dishes because you want to help her versus you're doing them because you want something back from her, right? And again, the way you'll know is if you do it and then then you're like, oh, well, you know, why didn't you do anything for me, right? You start getting frustrated or you start exploding or you start escaping, right? That's how you know you're in the mosquito cycle versus you're just doing it because you care and you love her. Right. And some guys they'll say, no, Mike, I really am doing it that way. But then when we go through all these symptoms, then they can kind of see, oh, yeah. Right. Or if they well ask, well, hey, like, do, do you feel like you're, you're doing a lot more than your wife? And they'll kind of, uh, you know, I don't know. But then they'll finally say, yeah. Right. Yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> but of course, they haven't been direct about that. It's just a, a clue to that mosquito cycle. Right. I'm doing it because I want something back or I'm doing it just so I can feel like I'm doing more than her. And I kind of get an ego boost from that. OK. And they kind of trap themselves in this situation. OK. So, again, to kind of summarize what happens. All right. So you have this spiritual, mental, emotional, maybe physical and also sexual weakness. OK. And what that leads to is low trust. OK. So either you're acting superior to her a lot or you're just trying to make her happy all the time. Usually you're kind of bouncing back and forth between those two. And it's just not attractive to her because you're not solid in who you are. You're not managing your own emotions well. Okay. And so that leads to low safety. Okay. She knows you're being manipulative. Um, she knows you're, she needs to build you up all the time. David Schnarch has this uh, quote, your wife can prop up your ego or your penis, but not both. Okay. So if you're really reliant on her to make you feel good about yourself, she's not going to be sexually attracted to you. Okay. So again, low trust is low safety. That leads to poor communication because she doesn't really feel connected. So then you get that superficial or roommate type of phase, uh, frequent conflicts. You get low mental emotional intimacy, which can be a trigger for emotional affairs. Okay. So then that leads to low mental and emotional intimacy. When you have low mental and emotional intimacy, you get low sexual intimacy which can be a trigger for pornography and sexual affairs. Then you get that roommate or checked out or uncomfortable or frequent fighting or feeling trapped in your marriage phase. And next is separation. And after that is divorce. So, you know, where are you in this sequence? Where do you land right now? Okay. That roommate phase, you can also feel really trapped in your marriage, right? Um, so, you know, where are you at? Are, are you kind of maybe thinking about separation, but you don't want to tell your wife that you're kind of thinking about divorce? Well, maybe it would be better with somebody else, but you don't want to tell her that, right? Um, or is she telling you right now, hey, I want a separation or divorce, <laughs> right? Usually guys will come to me in these later stages, right? So we've got low safety, low mental emotional connection, low sexual connection. They feel a roommate checked out. They haven't had sex for a long time, you know, so they're kind of s feeling really stuck, okay? Um, and then guys will come to me also in the, the separation and divorce phases for, for help and, and, and often after infidelity. Okay. It'd be great if people came earlier, but usually they come there when things are, you know, when they're in trouble. Um, but the good news is you can reverse this sequence. Okay. You can build spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, and sexual strength. You can build all those strengths. Okay. So when you do that, you become a strong, attractive, trustworthy man. Okay. That's the result of that. And you use that internal strength, right? It builds trust, okay? And then you build up your communication and intimacy skills so that you can have that passionate marriage, okay? And so the way we do this, it's really just three simple steps. Step one, was we identify and eliminate your negative, unattractive patterns of thinking, feeling, and acting, which you have specific ones that are unique to you, like they're, they're patterns that are there. But we need to help you see your specific ones. They'll probably fall into some of the similar patterns, but we want to make sure, right, and get yours. So then step two, we replace those with positive, attractive patterns, okay? And then step three is that we repeat those new patterns until you're attractive on default. Because, look, you might be listening to this podcast, you're like, oh, yeah, Mike, I, I just noticed a bunch of my negative ones. And then, yeah, I could try something new. But, you know, a lot of times you don't really practice those. You don't, and a lot of times you're going to miss 
you know, some of the more uh, nuanced things about identifying the negative ones. Also, it's going to be hard to think of new patterns on your own. You, you usually need some help to, to do that. So again, like listening to the podcast is good, but coming in and doing this work is what makes the transition, right? And this is the sequence that you learn anything. So like if you're learning the piano, okay, first we have to get rid of the bad notes you're playing, right? Then you start playing the right notes and then you practice those right notes until that's your habit. You got muscle memory, okay? If you're playing basketball, you your coach will help you get rid of your bad form. You're going to get new form. And then you're going to practice that new form until you're shooting consistently or, or hitting the ball consistently in golf or whatever you play, right? Or shooting, shooting a gun consistently, right? We get rid of like pulling the trigger fast. You start pulling the trigger slow and then you pull the trigger slow enough times that it's a habit, right? So we just apply those same principles to marriage and it just works, right? Especially when we combine them with Christian principles, okay? So trust leads to safety, right? So we build trust back by eliminating your selfish, hurtful behaviors and apologizing for them. Okay, because really mosquito cycle, it's selfish, it's manipulative, it's hurtful, right? So we got to see all of that, get rid of it, right? We got to make sure you're being a man of your word at all times, okay? Which that feels good too. By the way, that's how you build self-confidence is by being a man of your word. If you want to ruin your self-confidence, don't follow through on what you say, okay? We also help you connect deeply with God for your self-worth. Because again, if you're not connected with God, you're going to rely on, oh, like I make this much money or, or my job or whatever. You need people to kind of build you up when your self-worth is based on comparison. You're going to either try to push other people down, make yourself look better, right? Or you're going to feel bad because you feel like people are better than you all the time. Okay, so instead of that, we connect with our self-worth with God, okay? Then we have real self-confidence and strength. We feel good about who we are. Then we get really good control of our thoughts and emotions. So you're not exploding, you're not hiding from your emotions, you're not running to pornography or things like that. So not instead of your wife saying stuff like, oh, he, you know, he's like one of the kids, or you know, he's he never tells him what's going on, right? She's saying, Hey, like this is a guy who can handle himself, right? He's strong, he's attractive. Okay. The self that being really in control of yourself, having that great self-confidence, that great self-control, managing your thoughts and emotions well, it feels great and it's very attractive to her. Okay. So now your wife starts feeling safe with you. Okay. That's what happens when you can manage yourself. She feels safe. You're a strong, attractive man, right? Strong man. You're a strong man. So now she's going to stop avoiding you, right? And she's going to start seeking you out. She's going to want to start, start spending some time with you. So next we need to really get good at communication, right? She, again, you're strong. So she wants to spend time with you. Now we need to know what to do when she comes to talk to you. Right? So when we get Good communication, we become best friends, we get mental and emotional intimacy. So your wife's gonna want to interact with you now and you're gonna be ready, right? You're gonna improve communication, learning to listen expertly so she feels deeply understood. So right now she might say like, she ne he never listens, he, he doesn't really know what's going on with me, right? Uh, I talked to a, a guy the other day who, you know, he, like barely said hi to his wife, right? Like their mental, emotional intimacy was really low, right? And so it's going to go from that to your wife saying, man, he knows me better than anyone, right? I can trust him. I love talking to him. I know he's going to be there for me, right? So that's one part is her feeling understood. But the other part is you being able to communicate your side well, right? Getting to win wins, loving her equally to yourself. So you're going to have conflicts. They're always going to happen, but you're going to know how to turn them into more connection, right? You're going to get those win-wins with money, sex, in-laws, parenting, religion, housework, time. You're going to both feel like you're winning, right? And have that great connection where you're sharing deeply with each other. You feel like best friends. You feel like teammates in life, right? At this point, you really are unbreakable, right? You're having fun together. You're, you're laughing. You're enjoying time. So then we bring intimacy, which leads to that passion, right? So your wife feels safe. She feels mentally, emotionally connected to you. Sexual intimacy does tend to follow pretty naturally, but also you've done a lot of things negative with sex, right? And so we have to get rid of those negative ways of thinking, feeling, and acting. We need to change those. We need to bring in fun and flirting and passion, bring that sexual energy in a way that's attractive to her, okay? And feels good to you. So when we do that, right, your wife feels excited. She feels aroused by that new romantic passion in you, right? So now your wife looks at you with love and also with desire. And you're enjoying that great sex life that makes marriage special. Okay. So this is what your new day looks like when you build these strengths, right? And build these communication and intimacy skills. So you wake up next to your wife. She looks at you with love. 
right? You're energized for your day and knowing your wife has your back. You know, just, just this morning, my wife, you know, she's excited to see me. She was excited to tell me about something that she, uh, you know, wants to do and, you know, was looking forward to sharing that with me, right? Like that's the kind of relationship we have now where we share those things with each other. It's, it's fun, right? And so you're energized for your day. You know your wife has your back, right? You go to work with confidence and energy. The people notice your newfound confidence. You reach new heights at work with your new skills. The other thing we talk a lot about is, you know, just living more in abundance and gratitude. And, you know, it just it feels better. And that's going to help you do great things at work, too. So your wife's going to send you messages through the day telling you how much she loves you. Hey, you're going to have some conflicts through the day, but you're going to be able to turn it around into new, more connection because you're going to use the communication skills that you have. You're going to come home to a wife who jumps into your arms, kids who are happy to see you. Enjoy dinner together with your family. You're laughing. You're having a good time. You know, you're managing those, those moments with much more skill now that you have better communication and, and uh, skills at managing your emotions. Your wife's going to say, I want the boys to be just like you when they grow up. I want the girls to marry someone just like you. And your kids are going to tell you, hey, I want to have a marriage like you guys have one day. Right? That's where you're going. Right? Then you put the kids to bed. You have a great discussion with your wife, you're laughing, you're connecting, you're sharing deep things with each other, you're supporting each other through your difficulties. And then you head to bed for that night of passion, right? And as you're falling asleep, you think to yourself, man, I can't wait to do this again tomorrow, okay? And you're proud of and excited for the example that you're setting for generations to follow. You know, you'd, you'd love it if your kids and your grandkids had a marriage like yours, okay? So look, you can get there right? You can totally get there. We can help you create this kind of marriage and that sexual attraction in three simple steps. Again, step one, we have to identify and eliminate your negative, unattractive patterns of thinking, feeling, and acting. So step two, we've got to replace those with positive, attractive patterns. And step three, we need to repeat those new patterns until you're attractive on default. All right. It really is a rewiring of your brain. Your brain has electrical circuits. They're used to going a certain direction. Okay. When your wife, and we're, give, we're going to give a specific example of this in a minute here, but your wife's going to do something. You have a way of responding right now that's negative. Okay. What we need to do is create a new pattern that's positive and then practice that. Okay. It requires daily work. So in my program, we do this kind of work every day. Okay. And that's why it's getting much better results, much faster than other things. Like, you know, that gentleman that I shared at the beginning saying his, his therapist was like shocked by how much progress he's making. It's because instead of meeting once a week, we do work every day to shift your thinking, right? To change your brain, to rewire your brain. So it's way more effective than the weekly therapy because of that. It's like practicing a sport or performance every day versus once a week. Okay. You just are going to get better, faster results that way. We're creating a new pattern in your brain. Okay. So, you know, the, it's like, a, I, I like to use the analogy. It's like, there's a, a grand Canyon in your brain. Like if your thoughts are like water, they've gone through this certain path a lot of times and dug this really deep Canyon of negative patterns. So what we do, right. We have to, first of all, make sure you see that negative pattern, but then also create this new pattern. Okay. So that we start going down that new way, but then we have to practice that new one. So it digs that new Canyon, right? So then your, your thoughts that you know, those water thoughts, they go down the new canyon on default. And that old one, it starts to, to like fill in, right? So that's how it works. So let's do a quick example. So this is kind of how it would work, right? So you, you, let's say you've helped all day around the house, you helped with the kids, you made dinner, you did the dishes, right? And then you approach your wife and you ask, hey, how about tonight? Meaning, do you want to have sex tonight? And your wife says, I'm feeling tired. Okay. So Here's an example of a negative, unattractive pattern that a lot of guys have, and you might have as well. So you start thinking, oh man, how could you do this after everything I did for her? It's not fair, you know, and maybe, maybe even more, you're like, you know, look, I'm, I'm being faithful to her and she won't do this for me. It's just, it's a rip off, right? So you start feeling angry, you start feeling resentful. Then maybe you pout, maybe you storm off, maybe you go look at pornography, right? So, and you do that to kind of like show her you're mad or guilt her into having sex with you, or maybe kind of pay her back if you're looking at pornography. Okay. So what happens, right? Maybe she has pity sex with you, but probably not, right? She's definitely not attracted to that kind of behavior. Okay. Especially look, if you go use porn because you're trying to like get back at her, that's hurtful, right? She doesn't like that. She's not going to be attracted to that. Okay. And your wife is definitely not more interested in sex next time. Okay. So 
a good test, right? Is this a strategy you would see in a romantic movie? Definitely not. Okay. The wife's like, Oh, I'm tired. I got a headache. And then the guy's like, Oh, why'd you do that? And goes and watches porn. Like, are you going to be cheering for that guy? Or you're going to be like, man, she should dump that guy. Right. So let's then, so that's an example of a negative pattern. So let's go to an attractive pattern. Okay. So again, same situation, right? Same situation. It's not that your wife needs to change her behavior, right? You need to change your behavior to be more attractive. Okay. So again, same situation. You've helped all day around the house. You helped with kids. You made dinner. You did the dishes. Your wife, you approach your wife, you say, Hey, how about tonight? Me and do you want to have sex? She says, I'm feeling tired. Okay. So now you have an option, right? You can go down a whole different pattern. Okay. So instead you could think to yourself, Hey, I want to connect with her in some way, even if it's not sexual, you know, I love her. I want to be with her. So your feeling is love and attraction, right? Which by the way, that's attractive to her where before when you're feeling angry and resentful, you know, that's unattractive. You know, if you're, if you're feeling resentful towards your wife all the time and frustrated, like people don't want to be around that. Your wife isn't attracted to a guy that's walking around angry and resentful all the time. She doesn't want to jump in bed with you. Okay. Maybe she will just kind of like calm you down. But again, that's not, that's not like, she's not happy about that. She's not attractive to that. Right. She's basically managing your emotions because you're like a baby. Okay. That's not good. So again, coming back to the attractive pattern where you're like, Hey, I just want to connect with her. I love her. You know, I wonder what's going on with her. Okay. You feel love and attraction. That's mature. Okay. That's attractive to her. So maybe you say something like, Hey, yeah, you know, it's probably a long day. You were with the kids. Hey, tell me about it. I want to hear about your day. Right. And then you, your intention there is to show love, to show interest. You're curious. Right. So what's the result? The result is you create mental and emotional intimacy. She doesn't feel like she's dealing with a baby anymore. Okay. She feels connected to you. She's attracted to you. And she's more likely to say yes next time because she can say no without you freaking out, right? Without you showing mental emotional weakness. Here you're showing mental emotional strength. All right. So that's a simple example, but that's the kind of thing we do in the program, right? We help you see your negative, change it to positive. But then even right now you might be saying, oh Mike, yeah, let me try that tonight. But if you don't practice it, you won't do it, right? You're going to go back to the old pattern, especially under stress. We go back to old patterns. That's why I have to practice the new one all the time. Okay. And this is the process and it just works, right? This is another gentleman. He said, after years of studying marriage materials, he'd been married over 30 years, seeing marriage counselors and praying for change. I finally found something that has truly made a difference. My wife calls it the magic pill, right? The magic pill because it just works and works fast. We're both grateful. Thanks again, Dr. Mike. Okay. This is a wife also who was, you know, excited about his changes and wanted to make changes herself. You know, a lot of times when the guys start and are leaders, right? Like we're meant to be and make these changes, their wife wants to also follow. A lot of guys that's happened with their wives. Okay. So again, to do this, you're going to want coaching and accountability. Again, I shared my example, you know, even, even me, like this is my area of expertise. I couldn't see it in myself, right? I needed someone from the outside to point it out. Okay. So what we do with coaching and accountability, we help you find your specific negative, unattractive patterns that are driving your wife away. Okay. And then we're going to help you create new attractive patterns. Cause again, like your brain can't generate a new one by itself. You need some outside ideas and then we'll hold you accountable to practice those new patterns every day until you're strong and attractive on default. And again, it's all while living true to Christian principles. Like there, there is understandably concern sometimes that, um, you know, modern psychology or psychiatry is going to go against Christian principles, but here we keep it with that. And again, that's also why we're getting such good results. Cause like I shared, a lot of these guys, they talk about feeling closer to God through this program. Okay. And when we do that, we just, we're successful, right? So again, it just can't feel it's how your brain works. You know, we get rid of those negative patterns, put new ones in practice them. It just works. Right. And it will make your wife more interested in having sex with you. That's what happens when you become stronger and more attractive. You're communicating, you're uh, bringing fun and flirting in a positive way, right? So you become that strong, attractive man, and then you have the skills to create a strong and passionate marriage, okay? You build trust, you build communication, you build intimacy. Again, we do that by finding the negative patterns, replacing them with positive, practicing them until you can't get it wrong. So if you want to come join us, right? Come find your negative patterns, replace them, right? Build trust, communication, intimacy, become that strong man, create that strong marriage, set that example for generations to follow. 
Okay. Come join us. Visit strongmenstrongmarriages.com or there's a link in the show notes and apply to join. You have to find an application based on your application. We'll send you your best next steps uh, to get involved in that coaching and accountability. Okay, men. So stay strong and we'll see you next episode.